So this will be all about Donald Trump, the ages of Trump, from a young man to the old person that he is now. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to go through Trump through the ages. You know, he inherited that company from his father at a um, you know, young age for to get such a, a huge thing going. I mean, he really started on his own with what he says was a million dollar loan from his dad that he paid back, but a small million dollar loan, he says. But actually, uh, it's much more detailed. Than that. So I'll tell you a little bit about that, and then we'll do a look at Donald through the ages, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, so we're going to have a little talk about the ages of Trump. And so I've got two sets of cards we'll be using here, the new Paladini Tarot and then the Golden Universal Tarot. So this will be for the first part of his uh, first few decades and then the last few decades is how we'll do this. Um, this should be interesting, I think. You know, the deal with uh, Trump and actually the whole Trump legacy, it was all built on shady, uh, stretching the truth, or stretching the bounds of, of, of what's legal. Uh, the, the grandfather of Trump uh, is the one who came over and made his fortune. Of course, um, it, uh, supposedly, uh, he, the reason he left Bavaria, uh, originally uh, Germany, was uh, because uh, he didn't want to serve in the military. So he was a draft dodger, apparently. And uh, after he'd made his fortune, uh, you know, he went to New York. He had some um, brothels, as a matter of fact, uh, that were probably disguised as something else. You can read on it. And then, uh, then he went to the uh, Pacific Northwest, made another fortune there. Same kind of scheme. Uh, but was providing service and people were happy to pay for it. Then he went back to uh, New York um, and uh, married... I don't remember who he married. If he brought somebody with him, uh, he may have. Uh, but anyway, wanted to go back to Bavaria, and the king of Bavaria said, uh, no, 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 you're a draft dodger. We don't want you back. Too bad. So, uh, but he still, he made a fortune. He came back to the States, and he made a fortune. And he passed that on to his son, Fred Trump, who kind of continued the same thing with that uh, owning uh, Harlem. You know, he had all the rental apartments. He had the whole thing sewed up. He could... Uh, rent to whoever he wanted to and nothing there was really no oversight at that time for the, for that and then uh, slowly when his first son Fred who should have in, inherited the family legacy uh, wasn't up to task wasn't ruthless enough uh, he skipped over him berated him he and Donald as a matter of fact berated him and um, and uh, drove him to they say be an alcoholic and eventually he died uh, from uh, cirrhosis of the liver, I believe. That would be Mary Trump's father. And then Donald, uh, you know, kept rising up in the ranks of his father's admiration to the point where uh, the father uh, bailed uh, young Trump out of his first few dealings. Of Trump. Young Trump wanted to go to Manhattan and be a big shot where his dad was just the king of Harlem. And, um, <coughs> or Queens, I guess. So commercial so um and there you go so trump's donald trump's legacy has never been based on anything authentic or uh the groundwork of it was never admirable admirable but first meditation I guess what I want to accomplish in this is just to kind of see who was Trump in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and we know who he is in his 70s, don't we? So let's use these cards for the first few decades. Trump in his 20s, three cards, 
We'll always start all each of these decades out with just three cards to see what the cards can tell us. Who was Trump in his 20s? One, two, three. Trump in his 20s. Remember, this is the beginning of him testing the waters. He'd already been in the military school and knew um, how to grift a little bit. Page of Pentacles. Okay, so this is a young um, member of the Royal Court. Okay, so he's a young man and he's after money. Next card is the Two of Swords. This was a time when he had to make a decision. Go for the Almighty Buck or something else. And then the last one, Queen of Swords. Interesting that we'd have the Queen of Swords. You know, the, the Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And the Queen of Swords is kind of the one who's um, bringing that up um, as, as her standard. So he starts out, let's do it as a little uh, diet cross. So he starts out as the Page of Pentacles, okay? The challenge to that are the decisions he had to make. The basis of that, ah, the Queen of Swords, now it makes sense because this was his mother. She was the one holding up the um, standard that he had to adhere to. So he learned how to manipulate through learning how to ma manipulate his mother. And of course, here we go with the past, with his temperance, finding that balance. Yeah, that's exactly what he learned to get around his mom. In the sky of this Trump in his 20s, he had a plan. He had a plan, and it looks like it was to... He was already rich, but I guess he wanted to be his own rich. And then the likely outcome, Trump in his 20s, King of Swords. Okay, he overtook the queen, and he became the one who was in charge of his uh, truth, which, as we know, was a skewed version of what the actual truth was. That's what he learned in military school, in boarding school, and uh, and bullying. He learned that you could bully, and you can read all of this online. He learned that you could bully and win. That was just in his 20s, 30s. Now let's see what's going on. Trump in his 30s. Do three stacks, 10, 20, 30. Trump in his 30s. So by now, he is on the way to making some deals. He's um, probably married already. I'm not sure what at what age he married Ivana. But Trump in his 30s. Let's start with three cards. See if we get there with that. Two, three. So he's already decided that he's going to be the king of his truth. Okay. First card, Trump in his 30s. Page of Swords. As it turns out, he's not as strong a uh, representative, rep representative of his own truth as he would have had it been in his 30s. So Page, he's the weakest member of the royal court. The next card up, ah, looking at things from a different... This is when he starts to develop another perspective. I think in his 30s may have been when he um, gained the friendship of Roy Cohn. Look that up. Uh, who was a uh, dirty attorney, very successful, and who taught Trump uh, everything he knows legally. And then the last one, the sun. Okay, this is when he starts to shine. So this is fine with three cards. So he starts out in his 30s as, you know, not as strong as he would have wanted to be with his own truth, which we know now for Trump is just a skewed message. Um, he'd already learned that you have to look at things from another direction, and he started, his star really started to rise. That's the 30s. Let's see what's going on for Trump in his 40s. Trump in his 40s. Trump, Trump in his 40s. So now, by the time he's 40, he's probably got a couple of kids at least, and um, he and Ivana would have been married for a while, and this would have been when the affair with Mar Marla Maples would have started, I'm thinking, in his 40s. Um, and then uh, Tiffany Trump, I think, would have come along around that time. Three cards for Trump in his 40s. What can we learn? We know that he's already learned the lessons from the crooked lawyer. He's already started to drain out uh, all the uh, money. Huh, interesting. I'm just going to leave that to the side. Um, that his father could keep funneling to him for his uh, lost ventures. And I've pulled four cards. Isn't that interesting? So let's see. Trump in his 40s. Interesting. So we start out last judgment. The judgment card. Okay, that's, I think, when he really starts getting into trouble um, uh, legally and learning how to get out of it. Six of Rod's victories, learning how to get out of it. Yep. Next card is the Ace of Rods. Okay, new plans start developing, 
And then the fourth card, Five of Pentacles, Fennin left out in the cold because in his 40s, when he was really trying to completely capture Manhattan, that may have been when the casinos uh, started up and then eventually bit the dust. So Trump in his 40s, he's um, understood that they, you have to answer for what goes on, but he's victorious uh, in those uh, judgments. Uh, he comes up with a new plan to promote himself. He does feel left out in the cold. Remember, he's got a lot of lots, loss in his 40s, and uh, justice has caught up with him. But he's learned how to manipulate it, hasn't he? That's Trump in his 40s. Let's go right to the next card, Trump in his 50s. Right here. So Trump in his 50s. So by the time he's in his 50s... Um, I'm thinking this is would have been, how long has he been married to Melania? Their child is 16 or 17. So let's say 20 years. He's 70, what, two or three or something like that. Let's say he's 70, just to make the math easy. Take off 20 years, that's 50, 60, 70. So 50s uh, would have been uh, a time when he could have become acquainted with Melania and then eventually married her. So Trump in his 50s. Who is Trump? in his 50s. By this time, he has perfected the grift. He's got, uh, he's selling the name of Trump all over the world. He no longer has to build buildings or renovate buildings. He only has to get his name on them. His kids uh, from, that he had in his 30s, 40s, 50s, his kids are starting to be participants in his schemes. So who is Trump? Three cards in his 50s. One, two, three. Trump in his 50s. Who are we dealing with there? First card. Ah, so still we have temperance here. Kind of learning how to find that balance. But I like these gilded cards because it's, it's brought everything up a level. Now, Trump in his 50s. Finding that balance. Ah, yeah. Absolutely. And then here is the secrets being revealed. Okay, so this is perfect because he started to really perfect that balance that he found in business. The money is coming in like crazy after the bankruptcies even. But at the same time, secrets are starting to be revealed. And I have to think these are dark secrets uh, about him. They're starting to come out. They're starting to make his way as just a major way of doing business. Interesting. Trump in his 60s. So by now, in his 60s, he's married to Melania. Um, this is the fourth child, Don Jr. Trump in his 60s. Trump in his 60s. Who are we dealing with? If you haven't guessed it, this is just a fun read today to kind of give us something to see how well the cards work and for me to um, practice a little bit. Trump in his 60s, three cards. One, two, three. Let's see if we have to go further. But Trump in his 60s, what are we going to learn about him here? What's the story? Trump in his 60s, ah, the Wheel of Fortune. This is when it really starts to turn. Okay, The Apprentice on TV is giving him national and worldwide fame. Ah, the Four Swords is learning to rest and take a beat before you get up. He's becoming more and more wise about making moves in business without carefully thinking it through first, because he's already been through so many disasters in his uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. He's in his 60s now. And then the last one, okay, now he's starting for looking into the future, making plans ahead. Not necessarily long-term plans, but starting to make plans ahead. Okay, he's thinking about in his 60s that the end of that career is coming. What's going to happen next? Obviously, it's run for the president. And since we're here, let's just go ahead and do the 70s. But I want to know at the end of his 70s. I want to know about Trump at the end of his 70s because he's just in the beginning of his 70s right now. So let's see, who is Trump by the end of his 70s uh, decade? Who is Trump? We'll start with three cards. One, two, three. Trump in his 70s, which is now. Or the future, actually. First card, 
judgment. This is the time when judgment is coming. Victory. And those short-term plans still. So even though he's facing judgment, he has significant victories, and he's still making those short-term plans. He has a way to get out of this, he thinks. Now let's rearrange this into a, a dietic cross. So the challenge, or the signifier, is that this is the decade of judgment. The challenge to it are the victories that he's seeing. What's underscoring the whole reading are the short-term plans that he continues to make. The past of this reading, ah, that lesson about learning to wait before you move too much is in the past, okay? So he may be losing touch with that lesson a little bit. The sky is wondering, have I done enough? Is my legacy set? His value. And then the last card is, look at this, the Empress card. This man is, um, is blessed somehow. He somehow uh, got the magic uh, in him to continue to um, to be um, to shine somehow. So he was put here. Let's ask one more question of of Trump. I want to know: Was he put here in the position he's in uh, to make us all understand uh, what we have to fight against? Is that why Trump is here? Did he fulfill his remit? It wasn't a glorious remit, but he certainly uh, became fabulously wealthy. Three cards. One, two, three. Trump, did he fulfill his purpose? Sometimes a person's purpose is to teach the rest of us. Look at this. So this is the hermit looking ahead, making sure that you're careful before you take that next step. Did he fulfill his purpose? Perhaps. Fighting off all those issues that were brought up and feeling embattled by those same issues. Did he fulfill his purpose? Um, yeah, introspection is what uh, this age of Trump brought on to the rest of us. Uh, we learned that we have to stand uh, and fight against uh, these uh, issues that uh, he's uh, exposed. And in the end, we're going to be weary. We're going to be battle scarred. And it doesn't necessarily say we're winners. But the last card with this Knight of Wands tells us that we must continue the fight, the night uh, for, the, for the plan that we have of, of overcoming all of the issues that Trump represents. So it's a lesson. That's what I think. Well, I don't know if that's what I expected, but uh, that's what we got. So uh, there we go, Donald Trump through the ages. Um, you know, if you tell me what you want me to read on, I will absolutely uh, read on that. Just make a suggestion uh, in the uh in the uh, comments. You know, whatever's on your mind, what's important to you right now, if it's politics, if it's something personal in your home, not personal to you, really, but in your hometown or your state, or something about the government of the world that you'd like me to say, Mark, what do the cards say? Tell me. I'll do it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this, these are the new Palladini tarot, and David Palladini, um, you know, he had just finished art school when someone asked him to do take on a, uh, a commission of doing uh, cards, and he did the Aquarian uh, tarot. Well, uh, 25 years later, uh, once he was an established artist, uh, he came back to the tarot and decided to, uh, to make this new deck, and so um, more to his influence. And uh, this is published by U.S. Games. And the, the instruction booklet in this is run-of-the-mill, except for the uh, part where uh, they talk about the new Palladini Tarot, where they talk about the artwork, and where the, uh, uh, the artist actually speaks here. I mean, this is an interesting few little pages to read, so I don't know. I like it. But the cards themselves, let me spread them out so you can see them before we use them are really neat. If you've ever seen the Aquarian Tarot, it's kind of a muted set of colors and it's a great deck to use. Well, these are just more vibrant and um, really, really a nice deck of cards. I love uh, to use these cards. They just really pop and it's easy to know what they mean and uh, they're great. David Palladini, thank you. 
but I like to do this so that you can get an idea of what all the cards look like and uh, maybe that'll help you figure out what cards you want to buy if you want to buy some more cards or your first cards or you know I used to always wonder uh, when I was just watching the videos uh, what the rest of the cards look like so that's why I do this new town new Paladini uh, tarot so golden universal tarot these are great cards this is another low scarabio uh, like I say it must be a sweatshop of let's make tarot cards back at that place um, the guidebook is just your typical couple languages uh, not too tiny to read which is what I'm concerned with but nothing <coughs> um, you know astounding uh, revealed in that but the cards are really great and of course what's what's neat about them is that they're kind of gilded you know what let me turn off the main light that I've got here in the room because I think it sheds a little uh, too much uh, shine on these cards. But uh, you can see that they're pretty much the typical Rider Waite depictions, just uh, gilded and golded up and uh, really make them interesting uh, to look at. And after all, if you're looking at tarot cards every day, uh, no matter why, whether you're looking at readings or whether you're doing the readings, you know, if you can shake it up with something that's a little interesting to look at, I think that's great. And of course, like I always say, I lay them out like this for two reasons. One, it's an interesting way to get your cards mixed up and shuffled. And if you're working with someone else, you can let them do this and kind of get their energy in the cards. And But the most important reason for me is because when I was just watching uh, the videos, I like to see uh, what the cards look like. Um, and you never got the chance to do that. So here they are, Golden Universal Tarot, uh, Los Scarabio. Love these cards. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.